Welcome or welcome back to Watch Advisor on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host, and with me, Edouard Melan from uh, Moza and C and Company. And uh, Moza and Company is a company that is based in Schaffhausen. And so we thought that we bring you the famous rainfalls to your pictures. And it's not a coincidence we're standing here since, Edouard, a little bit of your history is very much linked that, with yeah. the Rhine. It's actually the biggest in Europe. I'm pretty proud. And it's 500 meters away from the manufacturer. But yes, you're right. The energy of the Rhine was essential to the development of, of, uh, of Moser and of uh, the, the, the town of Schaffhausen. 152 years ago, our founder, Heinrich Moser, he financed and built the Moser Dam. It was a hydromechanical dam, so there were turbines taking energy from the water and with the cables and gears, like very sophisticated system at that time, 152 years ago, they brought a lot of energy to the manufacturers along the, the Rhine, many types of manufacturers. At that time, he wanted to develop the, the watch business. He had his own, H. Moser, and he also invited a very well-known gentleman called Arista Jones, who, ground, um, uh, who built uh, together with Heinrich Moser IWC. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. The year started for the entire industry slowly. But you were active, you have been already presenting a couple of watches. Can you just quickly run us through the models you have been showing until today? Yeah. Well, let's look maybe back at 2020, which, as you said, was a, was a tough year for our industry. But Moser, we were very active. We launched quite a few interesting stuff. Remember, we, we presented, and you talked about it, the uh, Streamliner Chronograph. That was the introduction of the Streamliner collection back on the 9th of January 2020. An amazing launch. We really never anticipated this, uh, such a success with this, uh, this new collection. We then had the launch with uh, MBNF. We did a collaboration. I don't know if you remember, that was also a huge success for us. Very limited, very high end, but I think it contributed to continue to establish Moser in the, in the upper end up there, innovating, bringing innovation, not only in the movement, but also on the hairspring side, and that we could highlight through that collaboration. We went through the year by launching then the, the Streamliner Center Second, which, I mean, built on the success of the chronograph, Today, I mean, we don't take orders anymore because it's booked until 2023 on that on the, <laughs> that collection, which is in incredible. incredible. Bravo! Yeah, Very I mean, good. we said we want to be careful, so we need to increase a little bit our capacity, and in the meantime, we don't take orders anymore because just not just to manage expectations uh, and yeah in the meantime we continue to be active we've been very digital we have an amazing team here you met some of them very young very dynamic they never see a challenge they see an opportunity and uh, and and we saw that i mean a lot of brands were kind of panicking in front of this huge pandemic and crisis maybe it's because you know when i took over Moser in 2012 we were full into the crisis just because we had problems at the manufacturer level and we resolved them and we were so we've been used to facing challenges. So when that came, of course we were scared like everybody, but we, did, we, we reacted quickly. And I think that's why last year we continued to grow. I don't think many brands grew last year. We grew by 12%. And this year it's, it's crazy. I mean, we were looking at the statistics at the end of the semester this morning. I, I cannot tell you, but it's, it's, uh, it's He's incredible. He's smiling. It's incredible. He's smiling. He wears a, he wears a smile. <laughs> yeah, but it's, Good you know, it's, it's, uh, it's many years of, of hard work and turning around this, this brand. And for the last three years, we saw it starting really like picking up and being profitable. But now seeing really the, this acceleration and seeing, you know, we can see now three, four years ahead and, and invest in projects that are very innovative things where we can really invest in long term working with universities and developing new things and pushing the boundaries of in, in this industry that was my dream in the beginning it was more like a fighting kind of you know firefighting approach where you have to solve this issue and that issue and that issue now we can really project ourselves it's different work but it's it's fun that sounds good yeah it's, sounds it's like good. fun yeah <laughs> So yes, a lot of novelties also this year. It started with the, what we call the final upgrade. That was the final edition of our, of our Swiss Alp watch. A lot of people discovered Moser because we, we launched this, I would say, um, this particular design inspired by connected watches. And um, the Swiss Alp watch collection was a huge success. I think a lot of visibility. And now that we're running out of movements, we decided not to continue. I think it's good to protect this identity, this beautiful design, the value of those products. So we created a 50 limited edition um, in, in February, I think it's called the final upgrade. And then we had Watches and Wonders, which was digital this year. But there we launched quite a few interesting things. We, had, uh, we started playing with stone dyes. I love stone dyes, but I wanted them to be close to our beautiful fumé that we see it here on the chrono. Very, uh, it's, it, these are dyes that work very well with the light. They play well with the light. So I always wanted to have something that 
is natural yet has the same kind of, of, uh, of effect and that's where we started with the Tiger's Eye and I. So which created the Endeavour Tourbillon Falcon Eye, that's the blue version, and Ox Eye, that's the red version. And then, last but not least, we launched the Mega Cool collection. Mega Cool is a fun story. Is a year ago, when or a year and a half ago, when we were stuck in the lockdown here, we had discussions internally. Said one day, this is going to be behind us. What is the watch we want to wear to go out and meet our friends, have a beer, you know, uh, go on holidays and travel again? And we designed that 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 watch with the project name called Mega Cool. We put the Blue Lagoon dial. We put a steel case. We have many different uh, bracelets to put on it. We have a tourbillon limited and, and a center second, and it became like a very cool watch. And when we first look at it, the Swiss Germans here, our watchmakers, it's a very typical expression, mega cool. And the first reaction of the first watchmaker to assemble it was like, whoa, mega cool. So we said, we keep that name. So it's probably not the most fancy name, but that's the name of that collection that we, that we launched. And it, and it comes out of a, of a moment where you really wanted to be mega cool again. Yes, and that's what we launched until now, but uh, yeah, still some surprises to come. Do you have any idea or any information if some of the uh, Apple uh, senior management probably owns one of your particular... I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I have, because I have, the last I, I, one with that uh, Apple... Like yeah. the charging thing. Yeah, yeah, that was the, let's say, that was really the peak of the peak. It was, yeah, we wanted to finish on a, like, always on a high and uh, it's crazy. I mean, this watch has been selling on the secondary market at double the price already, which is incredible. Tim Cook, are you owning one? <laughs> you know, no. So that was, yeah, for the beginning of the year, and then uh, now we're working on the next thing, the next surprise, and that's why you're here, Alexander. Yeah. I saw the watch and I said, this is really the quintessence of a beautiful and sensational, useful watch. On the watch is only what you need, but nothing more. That's funny that's what you say, because that's a little bit of the approach. We said, you know, we're taking really one iconic mov movement of Moser, which is the perpetual calendar. But we didn't want to take just the original one, the very classic from the Endeavor, uh, with the small second, very pocket watch style. We wanted an evolution of that. So we have a direct center second uh, perpetual calendar. And because we wanted to take two different, I mean, icons of what Moser has been over the last few years, uh, I mean, the, the perpetual is already 15 years old. Huh? So we took the perpetual calendar, we reinvented it, and we put it into the Streamliner. And I think, as you said, it's, for me, it's the most practical watch. It really brings everything you need. Um, in a watch, you need the time, and you need to know what date it is today. And we removed everything else. Of course, you have an indication of the months, but it's very subtle, and it helps you set the, the, the date. But then it's a watch that you don't need to, to take care of. It really knows whether there's 28, 29, 30 or 31 days in, uh, in a month. And that's all you need, time and the date. Power reserve, so once a week, you have to, to have that very particular move, moment with your, with your watch where you wind it up. Some people like to do it on Sunday, some people want to keep it full all the time. And it's really uh, like a, a very personal thing. It has similar dimensions to the, the chronograph. It's a little bit sl slimmer. Um, the movement allows us to be a little bit slimmer, but it's a 42.3 millimeter um, watch. See, I have a very small wrist, and nevertheless, because there's no lugs, the, and the very flexible uh, bracelets, it fits extremely well on the, on the wrists. So I think that's been the success also of the Streamliner collection is how comfortable this watch is uh, to wear. Because of this monolink system that we developed with, uh, with a double two points of rotation. So they, they, they can really curve for much more than a traditional uh, bracelet and therefore fit very, very well, even on smaller wrists. So I wanted to, to show you for first the uh, original perpetual calendar. That's the one that was created in 2000 and, or launched in 2006 um, and made, I think a lot of people discover H. Moser and company. It won the Grand Prix Genève in 2006. What was interesting with this perpetual calendar is it's just it doesn't look like any perpetual calendar. You have um, a few important elements. You have obviously a very big date. This is a two disc system. 
Um, we have a small second, uh, power reserve. And what's very smart is this small arrow you see here at uh, indicating 2 o'clock. It's because we are the 28th of February on this watch. We use the 12 indexes, and that's very smart to, to indicate the 12 months. Second month, February, in December, it would be at the top. Um, this was the original perpetual calendar. You can see here uh, from the back the indication of the leap year. Um, you can read where we are in terms of, of leap year here. This is the first year after the leap year. And uh, there's this small star that is rotating once a year. So double barrel, 10 days power reserve. This is the original one developed and uh, used in the end, uh, developed in 2006 or launched in 2006 and still used today in our Endeavor collection. Now I want to show you the new version that we developed specifically for the Streamliner. This is the center second perpetual calendar. Difference is the orientation of the crown. We have a crown at um, four o'clock, just like the, the chronograph. Um, the date is also at, at four o'clock. It's a horizontal date. See that the, uh, the small hand is still uh, at the center. It's a different shape, but it's still indicating the 12 months using the 12 indexes. Power reserve at uh, 10 o'clock. And the big difference is the second. We have a second au centre, centre second, a direct one, meaning that the energy transfer from the barrel goes through the minute um, rad, then um, uh, wheel, then goes through the uh, petite moyenne um, with a double wheel, one fixed, one uh, uh, loose, and makes the transfer then through uh, the second uh, gear to the um, um, escapement. And that's what we call a direct second. What's interesting also at, is at the back, uh, with the way we, we worked on the movement, you can see before we had a very silver, a treatment here we, we have a little bit more modern, darker, we created a contrast with the case. Uh, we opened all, also the, the movement to, uh, to see more of the gearing. We have a red indication for the leap year, here with the third year after the leap year. As you can see with the small star, we can still see the chatons and the gravure. The engraving uh, pops up very, very well with this, uh, with this gold against the darker gray. So here what I want to sh show you is the, um, is the jump at midnight. So as you can see, usually in a traditional perpetual calendar, this takes a lot of energy, a lot of time. At 9 o'clock in the evening, you would start seeing 29th of February, 30th of February, 31st of February, which are dates that, hasn't, that don't exist, but have to go through before you, have, you actually see the 1st of March. Here, we're five minutes before midnight, and still, nothing has changed. And at midnight, you see the jump to the 1st of March. But not only it jumps at that moment, Automatically, but I can still go back and force without breaking the watch at midnight, and that's unique. That's why I think this is the most ingenious perpetual calendar in the market out there. We have 326 components in there. As I said, 10 days power reserve, this beautiful, very minimalistic uh, design. I always want the Moser watch to look like a three hands watch with a date, and I think that's, that's the best you get. Style colors you are going to offer for this watch? So for the first one, and it's a non-limited edition, we, we're going to use the original grey fumé from, uh, from Moser, uh, or Rodier fumé, uh, as we said. That's the first fumé that we did. So we have the blue for the chrono, that's the one I'm wearing. We have the green for the center second, the matrix green, funky blue, and then the, the original signature fumé for, uh, for the perpetual calendar. All, all these colors are going to come for the perpetual calendar? Perpetual, there's one color. It's the it, it will stay gray. Great. Okay. I well, can tell you in three years from now, okay. but today it's non limited and it's only gray. And that's, uh, I think it's, it's a very strong color, um, quite monochromatic on the front. We kept the, uh, the red elements from the chronograph, the shape of the, of the hands, also the months is a red hand, similar to the chronograph, center second, flyback. Uh, we worked on the movement also because the watch is very uh, light gray. So we, we worked on the new design for the streamliner movement. And uh, we brought a darker gray color, so there's a little bit more contrast. So you have this anthracite um, gray movement finishing with the gold chatons coming out, with the beautiful engraving, uh, gold engraving. I think it's an amazing contrast. We also opened a little bit more the, chrono the perpetual calendar compared to the traditional one that we keep for the Endeavor. And as I said, it's the first time that we have four hands at the center. We have the hour, the minute, the, sen the second, and the month's indication, everything through the center. Yeah. I mean, for me, the perpetual calendar from Moser, I mean, it's what made me fall in love with this brand. So working with it and, and, and it making it evolve 
is, it was an amazing opportunity. We kept the essence of that movement, which is the indication of the month is at the center. So we have 12 indexes and we use the, uh, the a small hand. At, the hour, if it's at 12 the, the o'clock, indexes. it's December, one o'clock, it's January, January of course, et cetera. Yeah. We also have the flash calendar, which is also unique in the sense that the, the, the day change at midnight, plus minus 45 seconds. It's an instant jump and you can move forward, backwards at any time. You cannot break this watch. So it, we say it's, it's childproof, which is, which is very rare for a perpetual calendar. A perpetual calendar usually uses a lot of energy. You see a lot of changes between nine in the evening and three in the morning. You see, you know, on the February 28th, you see 29, 30, 31, and then you get into the 1st of March. With our perpetual calendar, at midnight, bang, you should jump from 28, if it's not a leap year, to the, to the 1st of March. And you can go back instantaneously at the, at the day before. If you cross time zones, or even if you don't wear your watch for a, a certain period of time. You know, it's a nightmare with a perpetual calendar when you need to reset it. Sometimes you even have to send it back to the manufacturer because it takes hours to set it up. But for us, we calculated that it takes about 30 seconds. to set, If you haven't worn, uh, worn the watch for a while, it takes 30 seconds to put it back on the right day. Impressive. What more? And do you it's want? a beautiful watch. And the only question watch. I was asking with the dial is because we always have different tastes. Tastes are different, and yeah. you know, you people, like blue, no? I like blue very much, right? And but there's green. People are very into green yeah. these days. But we have and the center I, second. I, I literally green, yeah. can hear lots of uh, our audience now asking the question: Gray, why isn't he offering blue? It's great. Well, for me, it's important to have really one color per, per collection. I mean, not that it's in the windows, because at the moment they all sold out, but we have the blue for the chrono, we have the green for the center second, and we have the gray for the perpetual calendar. And that's, that's the way we, I really want to protect the design. I don't want hundreds of iterations. I think a lot of beautiful design have been destroyed by trying to do too many things. For us, it's important to protect it. And as we said, we have so much demand that all, uh, it allows us to be in that position. And, uh, and to, be a, to be frank, I, I find the, the gray, with the, the gray case, just, just, just amazing. And you have just a small touch of red that makes it a little bit sporty. And to my taste, it's the best watch. It looks, it looks gorgeous, I have to admit. If someone now is interested, since you are not even taking orders, what is a realistic chance for anyone maybe So this watching? one hasn't been released. It's been shown to all our yeah, retailers. They, they have booked the, the, the production for the next two years because just so much orders but nobody knows that this watch is coming out. So I think it's going to be the first few days, the first few months. I don't know how long it's going to take. And then it's people coming and, and yeah. ordering at their favorite are, authorized are you, are, dealers. Are you are assuming uh, waiting times as well for the... I think so. On the, on, the, on the chrono and the center seconds, we are now about a year and a half, two years. So I think it's going to be, I don't know, similar. But to be honest, I think it's a little bit too long. It's, for us, it should be, it's, I mean, we are a small brand. We're not, you know, we cannot ask people to send us their resume and, and their, re their, their uh, revenue. Uh, we cannot, you know, do those kind of things where apparently some brands do that and then have people wait for seven years. Um, no, for us, I think it's important to continue to grow, to develop this brand. We want to make, to be even stronger. And, and I think we're on the right path. And uh, so, is two years too long? I don't know what's the, the real time, but I think what's important is to protect the value of our watch. It's not that it cr gets crazy up there, but I think it's important that somebody who invests in a Moser watch today will see his watch retain value or gain a little bit over the years. But because we say it's we a huge investment. Yeah, and, uh, and then you also say the greatest joy is the anticipation. Yeah. It is. You can always take a picture and watch. Yeah, but I, I think one, if day, one day your dream will come true. Yes. <laughs> no, eventually, they're not limited, so at some uh, point they, course, they will yeah, come. Yeah. So it's just a matter of going to one of our authorized dealers. We have 107 point of sales around the world, so there's still sure, a strong yeah, presence yeah. of Moser out there. You know, we produce uh, 1,500 watches per year. It's not a lot. That means what? That means 15 watches per, per store, more or less. That's enough. To so just finish. Uh our emotional little uh, conversation in front of the Rhine. Outlook for the next years. And then we jump in. Yes. <laughs> How cold will it be? <laughs> it's the rain that we had the last couple of yeah, days. Yeah, I know. Um, a little outlook for the next things that you are planning to yeah. do. Can you dare or are you uh, in the position as you are the CEO, the owner? <laughs> <laughs> is well, many position? things, many things in the pipeline. Just we work, a little, uh, you know, a little feeling yeah. of what, where is Moza You'll heading? have to come back. Now we're working on new movements, of course. Uh, we're continuing to develop a lot around hairsprings. You know, that's our one of our specialties. We are very experts in developing hairsprings, so cylindrical tourbillon that we launched last year. We're going to continue with those kind of things in the near future. We're also uh, 
expanding a little bit the manufacturer, hiring new watchmakers. We want to integrate more uh, skills on, on the things we do. We already pretty much at 80% of the movement. We, we produce all the parts. Uh, on the dyes, we don't produce all our dyes, but we try to do more and more. Um, we're also opening our boutiques now, which is a new step. I mean, we had boutiques 150 years ago, but uh, it's been a while since we had our own boutiques. We open in China, we're opening in Dubai, in the US. Uh, we have a, a joint boutique with uh, uh, Richard Mill in, in, uh, in Tokyo. So this is an interesting development. Lounges also, we have one in Hong Kong, maybe one day in, in Zurich. We're trying to find the right location so that people can discover the universe of Moser, get to, to know me, my brother, the, the, the Moser family in a way, get even closer to the people. I think one of our strengths is that really we have a lot of contacts with the people who understand and appreciate Moser, but we want to, you know, to continue, even if we grow, to continue to develop that, that very close relationship. So yeah, you can expect new movements, new materials. We're going to stick to the four collections we have at the moment. So it's the Endeavor, which is our very classic one that we know for 15 years now. Then we have the Pioneer, which is kind of, um, it's an Endeavor, but water resistant. You can have rubber on it. You can have uh, a steel bracelet, but it's uh, not integrated. And it's a very successful collection for us as well. We have the Heritage. We will see some evolution there as well, which is inspired by the watches we, we've seen at our museum. Of course, and yeah. uh, it's a beautiful collection as well. And then we have the Streamliner, which is the one we, we've been talking about today. So those, these are the four pillars. These are our four collections. And you can expect new things on the four pillars on a yearly basis. Very well organized, very smart. And I love, I love the fact that you're really planning to integrate your distribution, your own network, and to have boutiques and that kind of uh, club atmosphere where yeah. people really meet and, and they, they relax, sit down, and in, in that atmosphere, take decisions. And not over right the counter. Uh, this, this is a little bit uh, um, yeah, awkward, old uh, style selling. To be honest, it depends on the market. Some people, yeah, don't, some, some some people want that, this yeah. relationship. Some people prefer to take their time and enjoy and maybe I think go five, six, seven times. Yeah, and, and yeah, then, yeah. I, I mean, it's not an easy decision. I can understand that. Edouard, thank you Alexander, very much. Thank you. What a pleasure. <laughs> I hope you liked our scenery once again, the Rhine Falls. Plenty of water. It has been raining a lot in Switzerland, so it's really wow, beautiful, huh? It's incredible. Incredible. Okay, Edouard, thank you very, very much for joining us today. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, stay tuned on Watch Advisor on YouTube, of course. And yeah, if you haven't seen the video about the chronograph and the automatic with the green dial, go and check it out. Bye bye for now. And can I say something? Yes. And, and if you have any questions, I know Alexander is very active in commenting, etc. I try to answer as many as possible, and I, I love to read the, the comments in the, on your channel as well, so I'll make sure I can uh, come under Heinrich Moser uh, to answer the, the specific questions you might have. So feel free to comment, and uh, I'll be there to answer. Thank you very much. <laughs>